you are finally going to become a boss at defensive play with this EFC defending tutorial. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to comfortably deal with anything from top level skillers to those counter attack abusers. My name's Brabzy, let's dive straight in. First thing we need to do really quickly from the main menu, go to the settings cog, settings, game settings, and if you haven't already, make sure you've turned on advanced defending in the defending section. There's a saying in football, back to basics, which means mastering the fundamentals to improve your all-round game. That's exactly what we're going to do first, knowing when and where to use each fundamental of defending. Jockeying is done by holding the left trigger down and should be done whenever someone is dribbling at you. Notice whenever I do it, I back off and let the attacker approach before attacking forward just after a bad touch. By not being over aggressive, you aren't allowing the attacker chance to skill or turn past you and you're giving them a false perception of having more space than what they do. This is also really important when you're being counter-attacked. Use it to position yourself so you can block both the pass and the attacker's running angle. Remember, the aim of defending isn't always to immediately win the ball back, it's simply to stop your opponent from scoring. In the process of that, you'll naturally win the ball back along the way, so there's no need to rush. Next up is the standing and sliding tackle. The appropriate choice should always be a standing tackle where possible, as this has the best chance of winning the ball. However, if you do need to slide, ensure you only do it when there's no other option. Also, you should always look to aim in front of the player coming in from the side. Doing this increases the the likelihood of winning the ball regardless of which direction they try to turn. Remember not to slide directly at the player or you risk giving needless fouls away. Instead, slide into that path they're running into to correctly scoop the ball off them. Finally, a new feature, which is the shield out. This is done by pressing the X button on PS or the A button on Xbox. You should look to use this feature whenever you're controlling a strong player, such as a defender or a defensive midfielder. This will get their body in between your opponents and the ball and dispossess them. It's really hard to give fouls away using this feature, which makes it really effective around the penalty area. If you're controlling a centre back and you're inside your own penalty area, I'd recommend using this feature to avoid the risk of giving a penalty away. Remember what I said about defending isn't always about tackling the ball. A lot of it is about blocking the passing angles and stalling your opponent's attacks. To assist with this, you can hold the R1 button to send an AI defender to press while you cover the passing angle. This is useful when you know your opponent is likely to cross or pass the ball. Remember to always position yourself goal side of your opponent. Goal side means putting yourself in between the goal you're defending and the attacking player. Again, you see here, we hold the R1 button to send the player to press while we track goal side of the runner to put ourselves in the best position to block the cross coming in. The alternate way of doing this is double tapping the R1 button while holding it, which will send two players to mark the passing runs while you go and press the ball holder. This is particularly effective if there's more than one run to cover or if you're finding player switching difficult. You can simply press the ball holder while telling your opponents to mark the options in the box. A good way of remembering this is one for one player to press or two for two players to mark. Great stuff, we're going into advanced defending now to put all of this into practice. At the end, I'll let you know a little tip that all the top players hate facing when you're defending. When your opponent is countering you, the first thing to do is block off their passing options. Don't be afraid to switch to a player further back to continue to monitor that passing run. You see here, now that's been done, the next option is to squeeze off those central options, forcing the player out wide. Continually using the R1 button to squeeze off those options, we've now won the ball back without needing to make a tackle. If you press the ball holder without blocking the passing runs, you can risk leaving gaps in behind. You see here, a temporary lack of concentration meant that I left the player in behind and a good player will punish you for that. Here we have an even game with four shots each and an opponent that likes to use skill moves. We're now going to put this tutorial into practice by covering the passing lanes rather than pressing the player. Watch the difference in the second half. Look at the jockey distance here, giving them that big space to lure them in with the skill move before tackling on the big touch and easily winning the ball back. Put yourself in the mind of the attacker, what would your next move be? Here you can see the striker in behind, so we need to anticipate that pass with a right analog switch to intercept. If a player is using skill moves, don't dive into the tackle, let them do the skills and give them space until that big heavy touch comes. 
for you to close them down and win the ball back. Now look at the difference in defending. My opponent is only interested in the player with the ball, meaning I can lure them towards me and then pass the ball into the gaps that they're not watching. Again, high pressure on the ball player means I can lure them to the side and then quickly play some passes in the gaps that they're leaving. If my opponent paid closer attention to the passing angles, it wouldn't have been this easy to break through. By not pressing the player, you can actually make attacks more harder. Here you can see I'm staying goal side watching that inside lane. Now it's about covering the gap I've left so the R1 press comes into play so I can put the centre back back in position. Sure enough when that pass comes across the centre back's back in position so I can hold the X button to muscle them off the ball without a penalty. Hopefully you're now understanding the importance of that jockey distance. We've not over committed to pressing which means we're in the perfect position for that last ditch slide tackle from the side. Again jockeying backwards here meant we could let them dribble into our path and use the X button to out muscle them. You know that everyone loves passing it across the box, so next time watch the passing angle and use the R1 button to press the ball player. Here you can see we're staying with the striker, stopping that passing angle which means we can win the ball back when it happens. This is so much more effective than just pressing the ball player as you can see here. It's so easy to dissect through and you know what you would now do in this position. Big strong centre back, press the X button and out muscle the attacker. Instead, my opponent slides in at the wrong angle and causes their own defensive demise. Here's the evidence of success. At the end of the match, our opponent hits a frustrated shot at our keeper and one from the corner. Those two extra time shots were the only ones they had in the entire second half, showing just how effective this defensive style is. Over the next coming games, try to consciously put yourself into the attacker's shoes and try and think where they're going to move the ball to and block all of those channels and passing lanes. After some practice, this will become instinctive and you'll notice yourself start to creep up those divisions and get even better at the game. Finally, I said I'd give you a tip that all the top level players hate facing. There's a common myth that that the best way of defending in this game is by super pressing an opponent. All the best players know how to deal with a high press and it actually means you're going to open up gaps in your team which is exactly what they want. If you've noticed what I've been trying to hammer in throughout this video it's being patient blocking those passing lanes and giving them space to do whatever silly skill move they want to do. By not committing to tackles until you're certain you know you're going to get the ball you're going to frustrate your opponent, give them less opportunity to break you down and cause them to make more mistakes. Over the next few games, be that person, be harder to break down and put this into practice. Hope this was helpful to you. I'm always in the comments section if you've got anything to say and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.